Hey everybody, welcome back to Diamond Moser Photography Channel. In this video, we're going to improve your waterfowl photography with five easy steps. Now, I've been doing a ton of waterfowl photography lately, and it's a challenge to get close to these birds and to get great pictures of them, but it's a ton of fun as well. So come with me, let's learn these five easy steps for making your waterfowl pictures much better. Step number one is to go where the birds see lots of people. I mean, the difference between an area where water birds are hunted and one where they are habituated to people is huge. Ducks normally are very wary, they're keen sighted, and they're quick to retreat or fly away if they feel threatened. And we don't want just record shots of the waterfall we see where the bird is small in the frame. We want full frame photos of ducks and geese and other water birds that show off the gorgeous colors or interesting behaviors and which look impressive. So a photographer who finds places where waterfowl see lots of people will find that even shy species can be photographed full frame. Find a place where the common brave species gather. A perfect example is the Canada geese here in Colorado. I go where they gather. This will then put other species at ease, and with patience, you can get those frame-filling shots of even some less common species. And I've actually compared being in full camouflage and a hide or a blind at a lake that I go to often. The birds never came close. Then I returned without camouflage clothing, and I simply sat still at the edge of the lake, and I waited patiently, and after some time, the birds wandered close enough for good photos. Step number two is to get to the bird's eye level. This is often the hardest thing to do, but it will yield you the best results for your photography. Getting to the bird's eye level doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be in the prone position. With today's articulated and flip out LCD screens, we can photograph from a low angle without needing to get ourselves so low. And what I like to do to get those really low level shots is I like to just put my foot out like this on a flat spot and set the camera out there using my flip out screen so I can compose and get some shots. So let's take a look at some examples where I was at water's edge but shooting at sitting level. The shots are okay, and sometimes even good, such as when you have a nice reflection, or when there are multiple birds, or one bird is doing something interesting, such as feeding, wing stretching, or displaying. But now, let's look at several shots where I got even lower, right at water level. Here, the photos of even common waterfowl, like mallards, mergansers, shovelers, and Canada geese become much better. They're compelling and they're, dare I say, outstanding. And of course, getting to eye level isn't only for waterfowl sitting on the water, but this extends to babies and birds sitting on shore or floating debris or structures as well. Watch this YouTube video to the end and see my go-to accessories for making my low-level waterfowl photography easier. Step number three. As a general rule, not all the time, but most times, sunny days and front-lit birds produce the best results. This isn't to say that I don't go out on overcast days. I do, but when it's cloudy, I mostly aim for atmospheric shots or super close-ups. On the other hand, sunny conditions generally pop the colors of waterfowl much better. Let's take a look at a few shots of mallards or shovelers. So under cloudy skies, the head colors are muted and almost black. But take the same duck in the sun and the head colors then pop. Dark-headed birds with dark eyes are also a challenge on overcast days. The eye all but disappears. Shoot the same bird in the sun and you'll get much better photos. Front-lit, sunny conditions are also best for flying birds. 
Of course, when there's lots of light, we can get those motion stopping shutter speeds without having to raise the ISO to extreme levels. Cloudy day ducks in flight at ISO 25,600 are noisy. Sunny day birds in flight at ISO 800 results are much better. As with most photography, the early morning and late evening sweet light hours are best as well. I don't even go out midday anymore. I work the magic light hours for the best results. Step number four. Learn a bit of the bird's behavior in order to predict movements. While you're sitting lakeside and watching waterfowl, take a few mental notes about things that the birds do, which can then tell you that the birds are getting ready to take off or to do a wing stretch or something else interesting when this behavior is repeated. This bobbing head behavior in mallards is a good indicator of what's going to happen next. And this preening with bathing behavior means a wing stretch is coming. A diving duck will generally look side to side and sit up taller just before it dives. Once it dives, of course, it will resurface in order to eat whatever it might have caught. Be ready for this. Step number five. Learn and use the following camera settings for your best waterfowl photos. Set the camera to the highest frame rate and to continuous focus. Look to get a fast shutter speed such as a thousandth of a second, or faster if you have enough light for flight or action shots. When I'm doing birds in flight, I like a one four thousandth of a second shutter speed or even faster. For my Sony cameras, I just use two focus area settings. Focus area zone for flight shots or action, and focus area tracking flexible spot M for everything else. In this second situation, I lock the focus square on the bird's head and the camera then follows and maintains focus as the bird moves. I'm gonna do some waterfowl photography. One important thing that I've got is a butt pad. I'm going to set it down here, sit down, so I can sit longer, nice and warm butt, waterfowl here, lots of it, and they're not too shy, so we'll see if we can get some good pictures. Accessory number two for low level work is a ground pod that I fashioned out of an old frying pan and an old ball head that I had sitting around. So I just drilled a hole in the bottom, attached the ball head to the pan, and so I can put my camera here and get those steady low level shots when I want to get right down to the water's level. However, I normally don't use my ground pod if I'm going to change up compositions and do some low level birds or some birds might be flying in, I'm gonna to try to do some birds in flight, then I normally just stretch out my leg and rest my camera right on my ankle and then I can get those low level shots but I can switch quickly if I see some birds in flight that I also wanna photograph. All right, so hopefully you'll use my tips and you'll get out there to the nearest pond, lake, or seashore and you'll photograph that waterfowl that you find. It's a ton of fun and the resulting images can be gorgeous. Please subscribe if you haven't already, hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and as always, I do appreciate you watching. Thank you, and we'll see you soon.